Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for all the new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, hit the button, ring the bell, make an old guy happy. Anyway, this is the $7,000 mistake. It wasn't my $7,000 mistake, but it was the person that owned it previously. You see, this is a Monarch 10 EE, arguably one of the finest precision lays ever made. When you read the history about them, it's impressive. They've been making these for a long, long time. In fact, you can still go buy one today. The last I heard, and this was before the pandemic and the war and all this going on, this one was about $185,000 probably over 200,000 now. They don't exactly make all the castings and everything. Monarch finds really good machines and then they refurbish them to new standard, all new gears and everything and and that's how they do it. I don't have $200,000. Barely had enough to buy this one at scrap prices. But my friend saw this online in an auction about coming on to five years now and he went and bought it sight unseen paid five thousand dollars for it spent enough money for rigging and everything else to boost that up to seven thousand real quick he brought it over to my shop where he was attending one of the Richard King scraping classes and uh, we checked it out his joy and elation quickly faded. This thing was a wreck. In fact, it's been wrecked badly. We're still going to be working on the saddle where parts of it were broken off. The spindle was hit so hard that it knocked it out of a line at least four thousandths of an inch. If you look through some of the earlier videos, it shows you how I fixed the spindle. Got another spindle in it now and it has exactly zero run out. I'm happy. That part's taken care of, but we still have some major problems to overcome. One is electronics. I'm still working on that, but it's going to cost me about $3,000 in parts. And I want to make sure everything else is working before we hit the electronics. There's several people that have converted these over. Uh, this is one of the latest models in this electronic drive and somebody put a board in there that won't run this motor correctly. Uh, it'll only go to 1300 RPMs. And this is a 4000 RPM machine and when it does get to 1300 RPMs it doesn't have enough strength to barely turn over. So the original motors in it and we know how to put the new electronics in it to make it work properly so it's not a problem I just don't want to spend the money until I have to. Now this is an inch metric machine it's very desirable it's worth saving if it's not too much. Uh, I figure by the time I get through with it I'll have seven to eight thousand dollars in it. But it'll be a nice machine. One of the things these machines are priced on is accuracy. Now, this rail system here is what the, the saddle that carries the tool bit rides on. You also have a secondary rail system in here that the tailstock rides on. And today I'm going to show you how I measure down and dirty just to see how bad that bed is. And this is something you can do on almost any lathe when you're inspecting it to see if you want to buy it. Now, I went into this one eyes wide open because it's been inspected and we knew what the problems were. I know the bed's bad, I just don't remember how bad the bed is. Now, one of the ways we're going to check it real quick before I make the plan on what we're going to do to it is using an indicator in the tailstock. Now this is a little easier because 
the saddles off of it already. But sometimes I take this along with me when I go look at a lathe and do the same procedure I'm doing now and I get a kind of an idea of how bad the wear is uh, just by using an indicator. Now this is a little bitty tiny magnetic base that works really good for this kind of thing. Here, let me get you better situated with a different camera picture here. Now, as I'm looking right here, you can see that there's a little groove in it. Now, a lot of times at the very top up here, there's a lip. And boy, if you can take your finger and feel that lip, that is a lot of wear. Now, this one, I can't feel the lip at the top, but I feel that groove right there. So I know it's been wearing pretty badly. This side and the this side feels very nice. And like this one right here, I can't feel any kind of surface defects. So I think, once again, this thing, you know, most of the time it won't be past that point there. Whereas this rail, most of the wear is always in this area. And in fact, let me get down here. Let's see if we can see in here. Kind of dark down on this end. But this end, there's absolutely no wear. So. Folks, I'd like to take just a moment of your time to tell you about Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is something that's pretty new to me. It's an online learning community that has thousands and thousands of courses and thousands of subjects that you may be interested in or need a little help in. Myself, I got to looking around the other day and I noticed a section on acting classes. Now, I love to act in community theater around here and you can always get better. So I started taking a few of the classes. One of the classes deals with how to tell a story without words. That was pretty interesting. Recently I discovered I needed help in another area urgently, so I suspended my acting class, which is no big deal. You come back to it anytime you want, and I switched over to CNC programming. I really was struggling with a program I was doing, and I decided that maybe they could help me on Skillshare. Sure enough, I found a section on Fusion 360, or a class on 360, that has really helped me in a few of the basic things I needed to know. Now, if you're like me, you use the internet for learning. I've spent over 30 years using the internet as my main tool to research things. I spent thousands and thousands of hours hunting for things, and a lot of time getting just bad results. Skillshare makes it simple. They have hundreds of experts on almost any subject you want to find out about and learn about, and they've made it one easy place for you to do so. So please take advantage of their free offer. I would appreciate it. Now this is my setup. What I'm going to do is use this sled as a zero point, basically, to see how much wear is on this rail right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zero this out. There we go. We're at zero. And then we're going to slide this back and forth. I'm going to try to do this one-handed and on a wobbly chair. So let's go back here and re-zero it. We're back into the area where it's not worn. And remember, this isn't super precise. This is just giving me a rough idea of what's going on. So we're at zero. Right there, we're right at two thousandths. We've got two thousandths bedware right there. 
and we're back to zero. Half a thou. <clears throat> I got to stand up. And we'll come all the way up there. So we've got a dip in this bit. Right there, it's a one and a half thou. No, excuse me, that's two thousands. We're going to ride back. Goes to zero almost, and then we go on back up into zero right in there. Right there, zero. So, then I'm going to move this where it's on the opposite side. And zero it. Now remember, this is the side that gets the most wear. And as it looks like I'm right there on top of that, I'm going to raise it up a little bit. So I'm not hitting that part. I want up in here, right there. So I know there's a ridge there. Zero it again. Now remember this other side we had about two thousandths dip on this side. Getting attacked by this cord. Let's see what we got. Oh boy. We're already one, two, three thousandths where there. Oh, five thousandths there. Hope y'all can see that. Six thousandths. Six and a half. And going back up. Five. Five and a half there. So between this point and this point, there's seven thousandths of an inch of wear. Let's go sit up and do that side. Okay, got it set up like this. Let's see if I can get y'all where you can receive the dial. That's at zero. Already, we're at one and a half thousandths off. Staying pretty one, that's a thousandth. Going back to zero. Now we're going the other way. Well, it's right at zero. Let's make that zero and come back that way. We have four thousandths of wear in that rail. Minimal. Well, that was a not unexpected result. Still didn't want to find it out, but I did. Looks like the machine bed is pretty much non-precision right now. Now, 
That being said, could I make useful parts on that? Sure. Been making them for over 40 years on toys that were worn out that bad or worse. But that's not the point. This is a precision lathe and I want to make it back to into what it was. Now, I can send this bed off to be ground. That'll entail tearing the whole headstock, everything off of it, taking it off the base, shipping it somewhere, probably Commerce in Dallas if they're still doing it. But it's going to be expensive and a lot, a lot of work. I can't plane it because my planer, I can't hook up a uh, coolant system on that planer easily. The bed is an open bed down into the oil catch trough for that rail system, and any of the coolant would go through there and contaminate the oil, and it'd just be a big mess. But I do have another thought. I have to take off... Can y'all see that? I can't see very well. But I do have another thought. For years I've read about people that can't afford to fix an old lathe and they get after it with a grinding disc and all kinds of things. Uh, in fact, my CNC uh, plasma table that we're going to finally put together as soon as I get some room cleared out, the rails for it is made by a skate and a grinding disc and they can get it down within a thousandth of an inch, over eight feet, using that system. So I thought, why don't I adapt that to fix this bed? I've got to take off this uh, gearbox. And that leaves me with a perfect shot at the casting underneath the top of the bed where I can tap and thread some holes for brackets and then make up a set of rails out of cast iron, plane them on my planer, that can bolt to the outboard of this rail system here and be perfectly lined up because of adjustments I can make and then put a sled on top of those rails with the grinding uh, spindle that I have and grind all this area. The good part is right now it's only going to cost me some cast iron rail material. I don't have any. I tried calling Durabar four times and never get, I get the runaround. So I don't know what else to do. I was thinking of even finding a big old lay somewhere and cutting its rails off and, and replaning them and using those. But that's my holdup for this project right now. It's finding some material to make my outboard system. And then once I do that, I can mask off all this area in the drain down here and put a little mist coolant system on it. And I can grind that seven thousandths out. What do you think? Leave me a comment. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Thumbs up, you know all that. Ring the bell. Because I found out only about 17% of the people that watch my videos are subscribed and know when a new one comes out. I can lead a horse to water, but I can't make you drink. Thanks for watching. Don will be back soon. He's kind of hiding out from COVID. And I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to be sick either. So, thank you again for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.